and welcome back uh, for our um, second panel of the day with uh, Johanna and Alex. Okay, so Alex, I'm going to ask um, I'm going to ask you the same questions we asked to other speakers. Is there anything around you, your surroundings, that is worth sharing? Or if not, well, you can share anything that like is uh, controversial about yourself. Pick well, one of the two. I've got a skipping rope on my desk. Okay. And I'm in a boring meeting. I just hop outside and do, you know, a few of my numbers just to uh, keep the COVID five away. <laughs> So you're doing that during the meeting? Like is it... I put on my headphones and I just step out then. <laughs> okay, that's a nice suggestion for our next boring meeting. <laughs> okay, John, if you want. Uh, yes, yeah, so the quite same question for Johanna. Um, is there anything interesting about your surroundings or anything you'd like to share that's quirky or strange or normal? Apart from my camera flickering, um... That's a pretty which, cool effect. <laughs> which is something I've, I've planned um, and put on especially for you guys. Uh, no, I'm I'm in the Jux office, which is pretty cool. I've got Alex and Malcolm just out of shot, keeping an eye on me um, because I'm moving house today. Well, I'm not. I moved house yesterday, so I'm I'm I guess interesting. Nice. I bet that's fun moving. Uh, your video reminds me a bit of uh, Max Headroom, kind of like the, the jerky cartoon character. The uh, graphic character they made that basically just overlaid some graphics over somebody and he was kind of like jerking around just to make him like <laughs> seem more artificial. You can turn it off if it's distracting, but I mean, well, the whole video, but otherwise I'll stay. Oh, it's fine. It's fine it's because fine. the voice is coming through crystal yeah. clear. So that's important. Okay. So um, let me grab the first question for Alex that came through Discord. This is Mark Jensen. Um, thanks for the talk, Alex. And uh, could you please post the links that you add at the end of the talk somewhere uh, about modeling with data log and so on, if that's possible? Maybe yeah, so the I Discord post, channel. Yeah, so I posted them in um, in Discord, but let me also post them in the chat. Yeah, so for Joanna, we have uh, quite a few questions. Um, the first question is How does Grab differ from La Senia? So, so Grab was is more modern than Lucinia. Lucinia has been around for a while. Uh, Grab was written after the um, I forget the name of it SDL schema definition language was standardised, um, but it is a bit more stripped back than Lucinia. Uh, I think there might be some information on the Grab readme on that. Nice. Thank you very much. And another question for Alex. Uh, I'm unable to pronounce the name, but it's coming from Zoom. Um, one of the reasons I like Firebase for MVPs, minimal, minimal viable products, is to eliminate the need to spin up an application server. So my browser, JavaScript, and, or ClojureScript can talk directly to Firestore, including authentication and so on, permissions and using the JavaScript APIs of Firebase. So is there any plans to integrate Firetomic with ClojureScript? Um, in a way, so ClojureScript is still above my pay grade, um, but the folks at DataHike are building um, a conserve um, interface in CLJS. So once that lands, um, I do the Firebase bit, and then we can connect. And then it'll be similar to data script that you can just run in your browser and connect straight into Firebase. But um, I think the data hike server will come first and then, then that piece will come a bit later. So it's kind of okay. in the place. All right, thank you. Uh, Joanna, how does site deal with resolvers that need to fetch data from other data sources? Uh, so site is intended to be built on one database, which is XT, but you can put custom resolvers into site and you can also load closure namespaces into site. So if you really need to, you can do it yourself. So would you do that? So you do that in site, not, um, yeah. So, cause you, you can have a, like a GraphQL engine be 
uh, a view of us multiple databases. So is that is that what site is doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the resolver would give you the data that the GraphQL is asking for. Okay. Great. Thanks. Here it comes another uh, question for Alex. So I see you are a PostgreSQL user, and uh, I was wondering, are there particular reasons why you would favor that data hike? So data log over PostgreSQL, and why, what, and what might be the use case for data hike data log over PostgreSQL? Okay, so I'm not super familiar with them. Um, uh, well, I, I do use Postgres, but not a lot. Um, what I generally find, I mean, it may have changed now, but when I started writing closure, was that you often had to write the, the SQL queries in, uh, you know, a DSL or in text and then import it into your code. Um, and that for me always seems a bit touch and go, um, especially because you can make mistakes there that you don't pick up because, you know, there's no syntax highlight highlighting, it's not really compiled. So um, the ben benefit for me there is that basically writing closure all the way through in your queries. Um, and also with, with, I find with, you know, with data log databases, you can, you can, as you go, change your schema and, um, you know, without it being complete chaos, where they go looking in like Postgres, you know, you have to do migration, um, which can be, uh, let's say dangerous. So the data log, you dump all your datums and then you write in your schema and you import them and you're good to go. So that's kind of my preference for, for using data log, especially because I do a lot of prototyping first. So as a result, you know, I always know I'm going to throw away a lot of stuff. So um, data log helps me throw away and uh, restart without losing the data. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you, Alex. And another for Joanne. Uh, so have the Jux team been able to implement uh, streaming queries, so subscriptions um, in GraphQL using Grab or and or Site? Uh, no, but because Site is still in an experimental stage, it's something that we're definitely looking to playing with and trying out, but we haven't looked at that yet. And are you taking pull requests for that feature? Are we taking pull requests? Yeah, we definitely are taking pull requests. <laughs> there we go, excellent. Uh, another one for Alex, uh, from me. And I, I think I, I'm. I heard you mention in your bio that this is nighttime work for you, or like, um, like side projects. So um, I guess you're not using currently any of the Fire Atomic or even Closure in your production environment or a current role. So if that is correct, is there any plan for you to like introduce that um, in like in your role somehow or change your role? Okay, um, yeah, so I do use it in production. Production just gets attended to after 6 p.m. So I work um, in a design team. So UX, UI, and process engineering. So we don't actually do much code. Um, so I think I, I actually write the code and do closure and open source to keep the, the creator in me alive. And in my day job, I mean, I'm a manager of managers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually quite happy that to do it that way because then I can explore fully, you know, whereas when you're introducing new technology into a bank, you know, it's not just like closure, you know, it's like three years and then closure. So, so yeah, so no plans to change that at the moment. Um, but I still have, a, I mean, especially now with the, all the lockdowns, I have a lot of time to write code. So no complaints on that. Okay. So in a sense, it's a positive that you can play with it, but it's a negative. You cannot spread the word. So I hope one day you can you can do that. Thank you. Yeah. And the next question for Johanna is: um, Can Grab act as the endpoint to federated GraphQL services? I'll actually divert that question to Malcolm. I think he's responding on Discord. Is that oh Malcolm? Because that's more a Grab-related thing, and I want to do it justice. Oh, there he is. Oh, Malcolm. Yeah. 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 Grab, Grab is really just a, a really super small library. It's only four namespaces. And it's really just a sort of a library to use if you were building a bigger GraphQL system and you just wanted a, a parser and something to 
execute the GraphQL according to the rules of the spec. So it's really just a, a faithful implementation of the current, well, you know, the previous, uh, the, 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 um, the June 2018 version of GraphQL, which is quite modern and includes native support for uh, the schema definition language, as, as Joanna said. Um, and so far as a, a federated system, I mean, it's not, you could, you, you could use Grab if you wanted to create your own little proxy, but the use of Grab Insight is really to um, give XTDB a kind of GraphQL schema, you know, entry, entry point into the database. Um, so you can, you know, define shapes um, it's really the schema, a schema layer on top of XTDB because XTDB is a schema-less database and so it doesn't have a, a an inbuilt schema, so you kind of have to bring one along. And if you like GraphQL schema, then 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 site provides that. Um, but you could you could, if you were going to create a big federated system of GraphQL, you might want to use site as a sort of microservice or a node or a leaf node in that federated system if you wanted to provide a GraphQL interface to a bunch of data that you wanted to um, stand up quickly and then um, stitch up with other GraphQL services to create a, a bigger graph. Excellent. Thank you very much, Malcolm and Joanna. So we um, currently don't have any more questions for Alex. So if um, I, I have wants... some more, yeah, I have some more oh, okay. questions for, okay. not for, uh, yeah, not for, um, yeah. Not for Alex, but for Johanna again. Um, so I'm quite curious. Um, GraphQL is, is kind of relatively new for a lot of developers, um, even though it's becoming very popular quite quickly. Um, was there a lot of learning up front? And did you kind of get a sense of how different designing a GraphQL API would be compared to something like REST? I, I think there's barely any learning up front. Um, once you get your head around, the schema language, which isn't that difficult to pick up, the very basics to build um, a simple API using GraphQL compared to REST is very straightforward. Um, there's obviously an increase that you need to know if you want to start doing clever things. Um, but GraphQL also has really good tutorials and really good resources for learning. So it makes it that much easier. But anything you want to do, you can just look up. Yeah, and it looks like there's some quite nice tooling around there as well. I've been using the Apollo Studio, which seems to be quite a popular user interface, uh, and you can do it on the web as well. And it kind of helps you like experiment um, with that. I guess um, did you did you find like the actual design, like deciding what goes into the GraphQL was um, was kind of an interesting challenge. As with everything, I think it is. I think your, your first draft is always something that you go back and think, well, that won't actually work in reality. Um, but, but no more difficult than, than rest. Yeah, sure. So you've got lots of options. Um, I just need to decide which options you actually want. Yeah, cool. So while we're waiting to see if there are any more questions for Alex as well, Alex, is, is there anything else you wanted to add that you couldn't get into the talk? Um, not particularly. Uh, I think I said what I wanted to say. Um, but I guess just to give a shout out to the folks at Data Hype, um, they really helped me understand a lot of the stuff and walked me through the papers and whatnot. So that was just pretty neat. All right. Um, I have another question for Johanna. Um, is that how you pronounce your name, Johanna? Is it sorry, Johanna? I'll take anything, but I, I say Joanna. Joanna, okay. Nice. Um, can, uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, yeah, Site's uh, a relatively new project. Um, so you might not have like, answers to that. But uh, what kind of projects have you built with or like looking to build with? Or are the kind of examples of what people have done with Site already? Yeah, yeah. So we're using Site in one of our client projects. We're also using Site for our internal uh hr network just the whole internal juxt app and we're hoping that all of the juxt developers and even less technical people will eventually be able to easily put in a schema create their own applications pop um and grow from there we really like the idea of developers being in control of the systems we use excellent stuff and are there tutorials for that already or is that still a bit early days yet there's um there's obviously all of 
uh, Malcolm's building site series, but that's more building site. And then there'll be offshoots posted regularly to the same YouTube channel of short tutorials uh, we're planning to do as we build them ourselves on how to actually build on top of site. So there's the building site and then there's also how to build on site. There will be. Cool, excellent stuff. Is there um, any question that the speakers wants to do to themselves? Mm, that's a difficult one. Not really, huh? but you need to be prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is putting people on the spot a little bit. Yes, right. um, I, do, I, I do have a quick one for um, jo Joanna. Um, do you know what the name of the Emacs theme you're using? I'm sure some people are cur curious. I do know the name of it, and it's called Joanna has decided over the course of however many years that this is the background color to use, and this is the font color to use. And maybe for reclosure, I'll make this one a bit bolder so it's clearer. So that it's just evolved over. I customized my faces, and I think I started with the um, closure for the Brave and True setup, and then from there, I was I I've just in incremented it. Into my ah, own. yes, nice, excellent. Could do uh could be in control of things sometimes. Yeah, my my first boss tried to well my first dev boss tried to convince me to use Emacs. <laughs> um he's still trying. <laughs> there are other editors. <laughs> okay, still waiting for questions for Alex, but if there are no more. Uh, is there yeah, anything yeah. else more for, for Johanna? Um, 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 Discord here. Are there any features in the Atomic missing from Data Hike that you miss? Same question with the on prem and cloud versions of the Atomic. So it's confession time. Um, I once tried to run the Atomic like five years ago and it asked me for a license. So then I closed that and moved on with my life. So um, all the, my atomic knowledge is really from reading all the docs and watching all the videos, not actually using it. So, yeah. And thanks for like uh, asking the question and also answering the question. That was good. <laughs> Any more for Johanna? Um, I have one question, but it might be a bit too open-ended. Um, I was just curious what it's like working at Juxt. Sorry, Malcolm. No, it's great. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. No, it, it's great. It's a great environment to work at. Um, yeah, I can't complain. I couldn't if I wanted to, but I can't complain. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, the, we've been talking, well, you've been talking about uh, XTDB in your, uh, in your presentation today. Just wanted to remind people that there was a, an XTDB workshop yesterday by Jeremy. Um, very detailed, went into a lot of the kind of theory, but also a lot of the kind of practical use of XTDB. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, there are some workshops around using that specifically as well, aren't there, for, for, from Juxt? Yeah, that, yeah, there's some tutorials online and uh, workshops all available on xtdb.com. Com. Yeah, .com. Excellent. Thank you. And also remembering our audience that uh, tomorrow, um, Paula Giron, um, I hope I pronounced her last name correctly, um, is going to talk about data log, um, like in a, in a more um, like a, a brand free flavor. So going to the root of data log and understand what does it mean to talk about data log without talking about datomic necessarily or XTDB necessarily. So <clears throat> I think there are a few connections for you other talks um, in the conference regarding data log and uh, yeah, databases in general. There is one more okay. question in the uh, Discord um, to both. Uh, oh, um, it's saying this might be an unfair question, but how to choose between data hike and XTDB? Oh, that is a so bit I, 
<laughs> I'd be interested to know what Alex thinks because he's obviously done a lot of research into these databases. I I think XTDB all the time, every time. Um, but if Alex has looked at XTDB and has any answers, then I'd like to hear. Um, so, I mean, I haven't used XTDB. I mean, I've read about it and I followed it since it was crux. Um, and if you want to look, there's a bunch of the link, but I'll post it later that shows the differences between the two, the, or the three, and the atomic. But for me, I, what I like about DataHack is the fact that it's open source and easy for me to understand. Look, um, for me, a big selection criteria and things I pick is, is it easy for me to understand and is it easy for me to teach. Um, and at the moment, data hike is the top of that list. So I would choose data hike um, every time. So <laughs> we'll have to put out some more XT tutorials then. Okay. And I'll also get to writing then. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Challenge again. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you both. Okay. So let's just check if we are out of question and i think we are so if we are out of question then um we're gonna just thanks once again johanna and alex for the excellent talks and be here at the panel and their effort in putting together these talks uh, very appreciated and contributing to the conference and we are gonna take our break it was supposed to be like in 12 or so minutes but uh, there's no problem it's lunchtime in UTC so I'm gonna probably use that <laughs> in this case and uh, we are going to see you all let's say uh, five minutes to two just to be sure that you connect correctly and everything is working fine so but we're gonna start at 2 p.m with the next talk by Artem all right thank you very much enjoy some visual art <laughs>